So when we're trying to find this use after free, should we go with the acid flow? I'm going to tell you for the most part, no, and I'll explain why. So let's go ahead and take a look at this code. And if you would have started where I told you to start, right here at the open image, which create log file is called in user space. Eventually it leads to this open image inside of kernel space. And you could go through this. You could, you know, try to follow the file name, assuming that you had control of that. You should see things like the fact that you're reading the image off of disk. So that's getting the control record and put it, filling it in in this data structure. But, you know, if you went through all of this and you went to all the various things where, you know, you treated it like a hint where if I say it's defined herein, then you probably go and check that out. But the hint I was trying to give you there as I was telling you to go find the use after free was that perhaps it would be easier if you just searched for free. And it turns out that in this code base, there is only a single instance of free. So that kind of implies that whatever is getting freed must somewhere else be used. So let's try to find that use after free. Of course, you know, ultimately you would need to go with the acid flow to make sure that this is reachable, right? If you were looking through some particular piece of code, if you had the actual source code, you'd want to make sure that's reachable. But, you know, I can tell you that it is reachable by using some manipulation of the data that was on the file system. So what's being freed here? Well, it is this records param i index of flush block duplicate pb image. Okay, well, where what is the index? i flush block block duplicate. All right, let's. Uh, so my syntax highlighting, you know, is not working here because this is all broken pseudocode. So I can't just click on things and have it uh, highlighted. But I have an alternate sort of grep highlighting. So. Uh, where does this come from? I flush block dupe. If we scroll up, it comes from I flush block. So it is the index of the flush block that is passed in to this function. Okay, so that's just to say that these are the same thing, essentially I flush block and I flush block dupe. Okay, so those are the same thing. And then what is this PB image? All right, so I'm going to highlight the entire thing because there's actually some things that have that as a sub name of their struct. So, sorry, the, that's how I find the actual uh, usage. First, I want to go to the definition. So that PB image is the pointer to the data in kernel mode memory that is inside a CLFS metadata block. And those CLFS metadata blocks are the things where there were six of those in an array. So essentially we had said that, you know, the six things were the, the six control and shadow, general and shadow, scratch and shadow, or truncate and shadow. Uh, this is the official name from the Microsoft symbols, which are available for, you know, some sub pieces of this, not the overall code, but some structs and stuff for debugging. They do have the symbols available. So the array size is six, the type is this metadata type, and there is this PB image. Uh, the image itself, the CB image is the size. Uh, the CB offset is the offset from the control metadata block. Don't care about that. And the type is one of these types up here. So going back, we have this freeing the flush block index, whatever that index is, it's freeing it and specifically it's freeing the kernel mode memory copy of stuff. Okay, so then what do we see next? So basically we're looking for use after free, so somewhere this same thing should be used, right? So we wanna find all the usages of that. And so I said that, you know, one way I can find it is essentially grepping for this dot pb image. If I do that, then this will show me all the places that it's used throughout the code. But I can see that there is some immediate usage right afterwards. Okay, so I can see this mrg blocks i flush block dupe pb image equals null. Well, I would need to see, you know, is this array the same as that array? So I would want to say, okay, this record params pointer, where does that come from? Well, right here, it's this mrg block. So yes, that is the same thing right there, that this mrg blocks, same thing as records param. So this is freeing a pointer to kernel memory. And this is setting the pointer to null. And that's good. That's what we want to see to avoid some potential use after freeze. Then, and this is probably down to just vagaries of decompilation, we see once again the this mrg blocks set to records param pointer. So no real change there. It just still points at the same thing. Then there's the calculation of a shadow index. 
So it's the I flush block, which we said is the same as this I flush block dupe. So it was that plus the control shadow. And what is that? Well, it looks like we don't actually have a definition for that. The pseudocode was truncated. So we're going to just not care. And we're just going to assume that the I flush block was, you know, the primary index and the shadow index is going to be the same thing. Again, going back to that picture that I had shown in the slides of six records where, you know, there's the control record and then the shadow record immediately after it. So we'll just assume this is the shadow index that is equivalent to the I flush block. All right, so going back, we again still were trying to find, you know, usages of this, this PB image. We just saw it get freed, so where is it used? Well, we can see there's another usage down here. And the usage that we see here is that it takes the this mrg blocks and it goes to the shadow index and then it actually restores the PB image back into the iFlush block dupe PB image. And so that's a little bit suspicious because we just freed that thing and then we set it to null. But now all of a sudden down here, we're getting that set to something else from the shadow block. So then there's the question of what is this particular PB image set to and where does that come from? So we again, we have all of the references here. So there's not too many and most of them are right here. So let's go check some of the other ones. OK, we've got the shadow type dupe something being set to null. That's not interesting. But this right here looks kind of interesting. We've got this mrg blocks shadow block type dupe pb image equal to the main block type dupe pb image. So essentially it had copied the main pointer to a kernel allocated buffer into the shadow pointer. So basically elsewhere in the code the shadow is set to the same pointer as the main one. And then now all of a sudden here we have this freeing of the main one, but then we have the restoration from the shadow of what is essentially the exact same pointer to this thing that just got freed and it goes back into this. So now all of a sudden this is going to be a dangling pointer. It's pointing off at something that was explicitly freed right here. And it's all sort of because of this little bit of a logic error here and that it allowed down this control flow path, it allowed for the freeing of this but then when it came back out of that control flow path, it had the restoration of a now dangling pointer. So this is just another example of how control flow divergences can potentially lead to logic errors that lead to unexpected freeze and subsequent use after free. Well, what was the fix for this vulnerability? The answer is we don't know because it was proprietary code and there was no patch analysis by the researcher.